This video explains the wound module. That's when all the cells come together to heal the skin. This will help you recognize normal and even beneficial post-treatment appearances and to not worry needlessly. In the last two videos, we saw how cells work in the healing process. Now, let's put this all together. I'm at the Santa Barbara Harbor and I'm sitting below the seawall right now to illustrate a point. This is very much like your skin in that this wall is protecting the inner workings from the outside environment. Let's take a look topside and have a closer look at this. When you're looking at the harbor in Santa Barbara, nice and calm water, beautiful boats, and in a, in a sense, this represents you, your internal organs and all the good things that have to be protected. I'm sitting on the seawall, which of course protects the harbor from the ocean. Now imagine that the seawall is like your skin and that a big hole is knocked in it. Well, the first thing the city would do would be to throw sandbags in here to keep the sea out. It wouldn't repair the wall beautifully at first. And that's exactly what your skin does. When you have an injury, the system, the body, throws everything at that wound to fill it up so that bad things don't enter your body. And then later, when it has time, it can remodel the wound and get it perfect and back to its original state. First, let's see how the dermis heals. Here's an untreated happy follicle with normal structures in the skin. Here's a quick review. Here's the mast cell. When stimulated, it releases chemicals that cause inflammation. The capillaries react instantly and carry more blood. Macrophages gobble up bacteria and dead tissues, and the fibroblasts fill in the area with collagen. Okay, so you insert your needle and you're about to assassinate the follicle. Whichever modality you use, electrolysis, thermolysis, or the blend, you destroy the follicle. The area that you just treated is now called the dead space. Not a very nice term, but that is the medical term. The destroyed follicle contains dead cells, clotted capillaries, and some bacteria, but not for long. Instantly, the mast cells degranulate and flood the wound with chemical mediators. The chemical mediators fire up the cells and the blood vessels expand to carry more blood. The skin gets red and swollen, and this is called inflammation. This is a normal and desirable effect of healing. If your skin didn't become inflamed, it would not heal. Of course, that cannot happen. Blood plasma, white cells, red cells, fibrin, and platelets enter the area. These clotting factors immediately seal off the wound, form a crust, and the white cells begin cleaning up the debris. In most cases, this tiny crust will not be visible. Now, white cells called monocytes transform into macrophages, the big eater cells. The macrophages digest the dead material and bacteria, and they start to assemble. Within several days, all the cells are working as a team in what is now called the wound module. The macrophages line up like little warriors. The fibroblasts proliferate and produce a thick layer of gel collagen. That's the green area I painted in. And the capillaries sprout loops within the gel. The module advances and gradually closes the wound gap. All the cells are now depending on each other. As the gap closes, the gel collagen is progressively converted into wound collagen by the fibroblasts. The dead space is filled with densely packed capillary loops. At this point, usually around two weeks, patients may see red spots, and of course they think they're scars, but they're not. 
It's simply that you can see the dense capillaries through the thin epidermis. Nothing's wrong. It's just normal angiogenesis, the healing process. As wound healing progresses, the capillary loops are gradually replaced with normal blood vessels and the spots disappear. Now, the wound is packed with wound collagen. This initial filler is dense and not well organized. Certain fibroblasts, called myofibroblasts, pull the wound inward and downward so the wound gap gets smaller. In electrolysis, this pulling down action can cause the appearance of tiny pits. As healing progresses and the myofibroblasts relax, this effect goes away completely. In nearly all cases, the patient's skin looks fine within a week or so after treatment. However, it takes at least 18 months for a full recovery. And during that time, the skin continues to look better and better. Here's a photograph of wound collagen in the dermis. Think of this like those sandbags I talked about at the Santa Barbara Harbor. It's a quick fix for your wounded skin. This drawing shows the difference between normal collagen and a follicle filled with wound collagen. Most clients don't notice this, but actually their skin will be a bit rough until all the wound collagen is remodeled. The process of remodeling the wound collagen is called collagen turnover. On the left, you see a photo of normal collagen. On the right, a photo of wound collagen. Normal collagen is flexible and smooth, and wound collagen is dense and lumpy, you know, like sandbags. In the middle illustration, I drew in our little friend, the macrophage, because this little guy takes a full year to gobble up the wound collagen, and then the fibroblasts make increasingly better and better collagen fibers. And the process is called collagen turnover. Within 18 months, the process is mostly complete and there are no signs of treatment at all, just perfect skin with no hair. The subdermis is also called the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer, but the term subdermis is mostly used today. With nearly all medium to large terminal hairs, your insertion is deep and goes all the way down to the subdermis. Your treatment causes most of the damage deep in the skin all the way down to the subdermis targeting the papilla and the lower two-thirds of the follicle. The subdermis heals identically to the dermis. The subdermis fills in with collagen and fat cells. Nothing remarkable, certainly not anything as incredible as what happens in the epidermis. There are only a few structures in the body that are able to completely regenerate. The liver can regrow somewhat, but the epidermis can completely regrow, much like a lizard's tail. In this drawing, I've colored the epidermis purple. The basal layer is the darker shade, and the ascending layers are colored lighter. The dermis is tan, and the capillary is red. In these next drawings, I'm leaving the dermis blank to focus on the epidermis only. After the injury, blood platelets, plasma, white cells, fibrin, and other blood factors leak out. These products immediately form a glue-like material that fills the entire follicle. And if we can see it, we call it a crust or scab. The crust looks big in my drawing, but it's only for illustration. Notice that the crust I've drawn is only the width of the follicle opening. The crust I've drawn here would not be noticed. The epidermis reacts quickly to cover the wound. The basal layer forms a tongue of cells that actually burrow under the crust. Amazingly, the epidermis can use oxygen directly from the air. For example, burn victims are sometimes put in hyperbaric pressure chambers, 
so the dense oxygen can help the epidermis grow faster to cover the burn. The basal cells produce digestive enzymes that cut into both the crust and the dermis. I've colored this blue. In this way, the crust does not hinder the advancing epidermis. It just digs under it. However, if you can keep the crust moist, whether visible or not, the epidermis bridges the wound faster. For this reason, frequent washing or perhaps the application of moisturizer can help. But don't overdo it. The skin is going to heal no matter what. As the wound module closes, capillaries move in and nutrients are supplied to the epidermis. This speeds up the whole process. The epidermis spans the wound gap well before the dermis is finished up. And within 7 to 10 days, the crusts fall off. When the crust falls off, the epidermis is only a few cells thick. And at this point, it can look like a tiny pit. At the same time, the wound is being pulled down by the myofibroblasts. And this can add to the pitted appearance. The underlying angiogenesis is also taking place. So now, this can look like a red pit. Wow! But not for long. Within a couple weeks, the epidermis fills in completely. The pit is gone. The red spots continue to disappear slowly as the loops are replaced with normal capillaries. And the skin gets smoother and more flexible as the wound collagen is gradually replaced with normal collagen.